Good evening, Seven Eleven Alpha. Hi, this is David from the corporate office. I'm calling to do the weekly customer survey. Uh huh. Um, do you have a customer there I could speak with? Oh, uh, can you hold on one second, please? Oh, sure. If I could just talk to any customer. Hello. Hello. This is uh, Craig from the corporate office with Seven Eleven. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm excellent. How are you? I'm great too. <laughs> We're just calling to do a quick survey, and if you uh, want to participate, it'll just take uh, one minute, and we'll, in return, we'll get you um, a free soda, and or Slurpee, or hot dog, or all the three. Huh. No, you know what, man? It's all right. I'm actually in a hurry. No, listen, to motherfucker. Right if, if you don't agree, we're not going to let you back in the store. <laughs> really? I'm serious. No, it's not a laughing matter. You need. I I got to meet my quota, and we're about to close. I have 13 minutes left. Huh. Interesting. So, on a scale of one to ten, what would you rate your overall experience? You know what? I'm not going to do the survey then, and I'm never going to shop in Seven Eleven again. Thank you. Rock on. That was the point. We're f- from Circle K. Cactus. 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 That's how breaking this news is. I saw it while I was in the middle of putting together this show. Nationwide radio station hack airs hours of vulgar furry sex ramblings. Some Tuesday morning listeners of KIFT, a top radio station located in Breckenridge, Colorado, were treated to a radically different programming menu. Instead of the normal fare from Taylor Swift, the Chain Smokers, or other pop stars... A hack by an unknown party caused one of the station's signals to broadcast a sexually explicit podcast related to the erotic attraction to furry characters. The unauthorized broadcast lasted for about 90 minutes. That's weird because the headline says that they aired hours of vulgar furry sex. Not 90 minutes of furry sex. KIFT wasn't the only station to be hit by the hack. On the same day, Livingston, Texas-based country music station KXAX also broadcast raunchy furry themed audio there was also an unnamed station in denver and an unidentified national syndicator jason mcclelland the owner and general manager of kxax said in an email during that time they talked about sex with two guys and a girl in explicit details and rambled on with vulgar language not really having much of a point to the podcast oh listen to that big surprise there a radio station manager bashing podcasts He says, I'm assuming there was no real reason for this hack. The article goes on and on, and I will definitely put a link to it in the show notes. But the reason I'm reading this is because everyone's homework assignment for this week is to hack into your local radio station and play the Snowplow Show over the air for 90 minutes or so. That would be great. Go to the show notes. uh, You'll get more technical details about how they pulled off the hack, and you'll know how to do it. And if all goes well, I will have a bunch of brand new country music listeners on my show. Let's see what other news I have. Oh, yeah, there's this Twitter post from Pueblo KC, which is a screenshot from Yik Yak. And the title of the Yik Yak post says, When you find out the chicken you had last night was actually peacock meat. And then he wrote, It tastes like bad chicken, and it made my mom and daughter sick. Someone's like, How do you not know what you're eating? And Pueblo KC says, I got it from Safeway. The manager claimed they ran out of chicken and didn't think anyone would notice if they substituted with the peacock meat. He said they didn't think it would make people sick. And then the person replies, uh, what the fuck? They ran out of chicken, so they went to the back to get peacock meat? I didn't even know Safeway or any grocery store in the area sells that shit. So thank you, Pueblo KC. Am I pronouncing that right? Probably not. Thank you for confusing people in your local area with Yik Yak. I'm actually a big fan of Yik Yak. I'm on there all the time on my local one, just fucking with people. It's really great, and I love it. Everyone should check out Yik Yak. It's an app
That's how I heard about it in the first place. I read an article about uh, rampant racism and threats and all kinds of bad things happening on Yik Yak. And I'm like, wow, that sounds great. Downloaded it immediately, and it's a lot of fun. Everyone try out Yik Yak. And be sure to spam the Snowplow Show on all of your Yik Yak posts. Oh, and if you don't know what the hell he's talking about with the peacock meat, then you're not a real fan of the show. You need to go back a few episodes two or three episodes and listen to the grocery store pranks and the peacock thing will make complete sense to you oh and speaking of the grocery store shows a guy named ryan bmx5 pointed out that i shouldn't have titled the show trick ass ho i should have titled the show trick ass hobo so what the hell was i thinking not titling my show trick ass hobo thank you ryan bmx5 for making me feel like an idiot i really appreciate that one last thing before we get started with the show today You guys need to know that Laugh Track Matt and Zax have a brand new Facebook show page with the best URL ever, which is facebook.com slash I like the part of the show when the phone rings. So visit facebook.com slash I like the part of the show when the phone rings and like their show page and listen to their show every week, usually on Mondays, but not always. That's another weird little reference that if you don't get, then you're just not a true fan. You need to listen to everything, everything the PLA has ever done, and it'll all make sense. I have a prank request from Incognito. He says, These are comment cards that I found left on the table of a WW Cousins restaurant. So he did the right thing when he saw someone's personal information written on an official looking form. He snapped a picture of all three of them and emailed them to me. So thank you for that, Incognito. There are three comment cards here. Let's call some and see what happens. Hello. Hello, is Alyssa there? Who? Alyssa. Wrong number. Uh, is this the c-s? Nope. Sure isn't. Oh, don't lie to me. It's okay. You're not in trouble. I'm, I'm just... I, I'm from the restaurant. You guys were at our restaurant at WW Cousins. Not me, man. I'm not lying to you. Yeah. Never been there. Yeah, whatever. I don't think I believe yeah, you. Yeah, whatever. Sound like a liar hey, to me. You won't call... Hey. You won't call my phone talking shit. You better know who you're talking to, buddy, all right? Okay, well, I was just trying to ask a question about your, your visit here, and you're being an asshole and well, pretending you didn't there, even come so here. don't tell me I'm lying, okay? Well, I know you're lying. I can hear it in your voice, and, and we have the card you right hear here. hear my voice, so now you know, now you know me. What, what do you want? Why well, are you calling well, no, I, I, I'm just saying I, I know what a liar sounds like, and that's you. You're a liar. Hey, why don't you go take a shit in your hand, buddy? Why would I do that? That's weird. Is that something you do? I don't know. Why are you, why are you, why are you calling me after, you know, just bugging me for? I'm not I mean, bugging I'm you. I, I just wanted to talk to you about your visit. I haven't but been there. If you want to pretend you weren't here, whatever. Fucking liar. I'm a liar. So I don't believe that this is anybody from WWE Cousin. I don't care if you believe me or not. Okay. I mean, why why'd you put your phone number on this form if you don't want to be called? Hello, this is Mrs. Wales. Can I help you? Don't tell her name. Oh, thanks for telling me his last name. I was kind of wondering about that. He put a fake name on here, too. Who is this? He's a big liar. What's his first name? Who don't, is this? Don't tell him my name. Can you tell him, can you tell me his first name, please? We can actually call and do a harassment thing on this. Okay, you need to tell us who you are, first well, of all. You can't get me for harassment because he put his phone number on this form. I'm supposed to call him back, you fucking idiot. <laughs> W cousins, you just call me a fucking idiot. Well, only because you're being a fucking idiot. I would stomp you out, buddy. Oh I yeah. You. I'd like to see you try, up, man. Hang up the phone. I'm gonna ban you from my. Yeah, do what your woman says. Hang up the phone. Obey her orders. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, he obeyed his woman. So clearly, Incognito is once again trying to ruin my show by giving me fake comment cards with fake phone numbers on them. But it's okay. I'm going to call these other two and see what happens with them. Or actually, you know what? The phone number on this one, it's really sloppy handwriting. So this might be a 5 and not an 8. Let's try it that way and see if I get Alyssa this time. Hello. Hi, Alyssa. No, this is not Alyssa. Ah, fuck. I was trying to call Alyssa. <laughs> Who is this? Uh, my name is Steve. I'm the manager at the WW restaurant, whatever thing, you know. Um, she filled out a form and she put your phone number on it. You don't know Alyssa? Yeah, that's my daughter. She's eight. <laughs> Why is that so funny? 
Cause she's eight, and she put my num- name, her, my number, my cell phone number down. Oh, this doesn't look like the handwriting of an mother. eight-year-old. It is. It is her handwriting. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, I just wanted to let you know that uh, we do have security cameras in our restaurant, and we saw you guys steal forks, and you need to bring those forks you back. So forks. Yeah, all you stole forks. We didn't steal no forks. What are you talking about? You stole forks. You stole all of your forks from your table. We didn't have any forks on our table. I know you don't, because you stole them all. We don't, we didn't, there's a plastic forks in there, so I'm not understanding what you're talking about. I, is what I'm talking about is you need to bring those forks back, or, or bring, uh, you know, buy us some new forks and bring those back. You can't just steal forks. What company is this? The, it's the, the restaurant, that you, the WW Cousins. You have plastic forks in we didn't even use any. I know. Why Why would you time. steal plastic forks? I mean, who the hell we does that? We didn't steal any plastic forks. I don't know what the heck you're talking if, about. If you're eating in the restaurant, you have no right to take those forks home. Those are for, for to-go orders only. Did you take forks last night? What forks? We don't know what you're talking about. You t- we didn't take any forks. Oh, we had the wrong people. You, you stole so many plastic forks from us. And it's not funny. Those things cost us money. Like, what? The, who the hell do you think you are stealing our forks? I don't appreciate you calling me, accusing me of something, or my children of anything like that. We didn't steal your damn forks. We didn't even use forks at your restaurant last night. You know, I can just... So, t- it, I know you didn't use them, because that'd be gross if you put used forks in your purse or whatever. Come on, can't you afford real forks? Why can't you just pay for your forks like everyone else? And what is your name? My name is Steve. I'm the manager here. Your name is Steve, and you're calling me about plastic forks. That you stole. It doesn't matter... We it, didn't steal anything. Look, it doesn't matter that they're plastic we or they're, they're not expensive. We didn't steal anything... We didn't steal anything. That's number one. You're calling me about some bullshit, and I don't appreciate you calling my line, accusing me or my family of stealing any damn thing. So, so now you you're gonna to now, now you're gonna curse at me after you've stolen from me. Well, go back and check your cameras. Oh, we checked tell them me. several times. Yeah. Okay. Check your cameras. That's fine. We, Keep we, checking. Them. We so see all of you sitting around the table, stealing forks and giggling this about it. Stealing forks and giggling about stealing forks. Yeah, yeah. That well, sounds so retarded. It is retarded. What's wrong with forks. you people? Yeah, no, what's wrong with you for calling me on uh, my line on some bullshit? It's not bullshit. That's what I want to know. It is bullshit. It's you don't sound very professional to me to be calling me, asking me for a kid about some damn plastic forks that you motherfucker serve why That's why bullshit. why should i be professional with you if you're you're just a thief just go around stealing no, forks from people nobody is a thief and i don't, you need to check your cameras again because it wasn't me nor my family we didn't even use any little raggedy ass motherfucking forks oh wait 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 i'm yeah. sorry look i i just checked i just checked the camera no it looks like i'm wrong you didn't steal our forks after all that was the family next to you i'm sorry they don't even have a kid at the table oops sorry about that Hello? Hello? I I was just saying I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I I just, I had the wrong table. You do that? And what did you say your name is? My name is Steve. So they just, they just rearranged all the tables in the restaurant recently and I, I, I just forgot which one was which. So no, that wasn't you. You didn't steal anything. Never mind. Just forget I called. No, I'm not going to forget you called. Actually, I'm going to head my ass out to that that motherfucking store, and we will have a conversation, because I don't even know how the hell... I wasn't even at the Outer Loop store, so I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about and calling me about. Okay, well, you know, officially I banned you from our store, but I'll go ahead and remove that ban since you didn't steal forks after all. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to worry about it. We won't be at your fucking thing and make sure i'm make sure i put on facebook and every motherfucker thing so you don't ever have no business again oh that's not gonna happen come on oh it will happen i'm going to make sure i tag you all in it and i'm gonna put all kind of shit up i'll make sure that don't nobody come to your establishment again for this phone call that you called my line with well you just told me you're gonna come you're gonna come down here right now so now you're saying oh yeah i am i'm gonna 
And I'm going to come down there as well because I want to speak to somebody over you. I'm actually going to want to find out who the company owner is to make sure that your job is no longer your job. You calling me on some bullshit. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell them that you're, my you're, damn phone. I'm going to tell them you that you're, the, you're the kind of person that curses in front of your eight-year-old daughter and they won't give a my, shit about you. My eight-year-old daughter is no longer right here. And you were cursing as well. So you're very unprofessional. Steven. Yeah, well, my, What's your last name, Steven? My eight-year-old daughter is not here next to me. So it's okay for me to curse. Yeah, but you shouldn't be, you should never call anyone's phone from a, from your work. I know that that is not professional on Whoa, whoa, what happened? She hung up. But I don't think she hung up. It was some weird connection thing. I just lost my connection with that lady. Why did that happen? That's weird. You know, now that I look at this comment card, uh, it it says uh, age eight. So I guess I should pay attention to these things. It also says, what is your favorite radio station? And Alyssa's favorite radio station is 101.3. That is also the favorite radio station of this next person whose name I can't read. I think his name is LeVar. Oh, wait a minute. Th- this is the same address and the same last name as the person I just talked to, but it's a different phone number. So I'm going to call it and we'll see if LeVar answers the phone. And I should probably come up with something better than stealing plastic forks. I didn't know it was a plastic fork restaurant. I thought this was a real restaurant. I've never heard of this place. Hello. Hey, LeVar. Yes. This is Steven from the restaurant, WW Cousins. Mm-hmm. And um, we saw your comment card here where, where you say that we need to add char- a charging area. with, with uh, for- Hey, can you tell that lady in the background to shut the fuck up? Because I'm, I'm trying to, we're trying to talk here. Dude, stop playing on the phone. This is not no WW Cousins. We got a call ID. Peace. Ah, okay. I got told on that one. They have caller ID... And if they were to look at their caller ID, they would see the number of WW Cousins, because that's what I set my caller ID to. This last one, I'm not going to call it, um, because it is, once again, the same family, same last name. And this one was written by an 11-year-old boy who says in the suggestions that we should get a TV. And as much as I want to yell at him about that, I should probably just leave this family alone. Uh, And I don't think I can read his phone number anyway. His phone number's a mess. I had to call him up and yell at him about his handwriting. Oh, and look at this. He doesn't even like the same radio station as the rest of his family. I should point out, though, that um, every single checkbox on this comment card, uh, they rated every single thing excellent. All three cards, everything is excellent. So they were very happy with their meal. And hopefully when she storms in there to talk to the manager, she will realize that I'm just a prank caller and that they can still go in there and not have to worry about uh, people thinking that they stole plastic forks. Thank you, Incognito, for sending these to me. He thinks he could do that to me and I won't tell anyone? Well, I am telling. Here's startling secret confessions. Call 1-900-370-9200. I'm too embarrassed to tell my best friend, but I've got to tell someone. Listen in privacy to women sharing their innermost feelings. Call 1-900-370-9200. I can't believe you're telling me this. Secret confessions. Call 1-900-370-9200. $2 for the first minute, $1 for each additional minute. You know what I haven't done in a while? I haven't called random people out of the phone book and pretended to be with the post office and told them crazy things about new postal regulations or whatever. Handicapped postmen and wheelchair ramps and stuff like that. So let's do a little bit of that and see how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and use the same phone book that I've used for this in the past. This is a really marked up phone book. Like I, I've just, I've gone through so many pages and just crossed out numbers in it. And I still don't remember who sent me this phone book, but whoever you are, thank you. I've changed my caller ID to the post office. And that is the same post office where that uh, lady had the weird experience of trying to call City Hall and talk to the mayor, but she kept getting me. I don't know if we'll end up calling her again. Probably not, but it's nice to know that we're going to give her some new challenges today when she starts getting weird phone calls from post office customers. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Farrow? Yes? Hi, this is Roy from the post office. Yes. And uh, I just um, needed to let you know that uh, the deadline for upgrading your mailbox is uh, July 31st of this year. What's the matter with our mailbox? Well, you need to get one of those new e-boxes. An e-box? What's an e-box? It's, um, you've never heard of the e-box? Do you, have you, they, they talk about it on the news quite a bit, I think. Nope. Oh, okay. Well, it's, it's basically like a mailbox, but you can't put anything in it. It's just got a, it's got a screen and a keyboard on it. 
and it hangs on the outside of your house. And um, uh, whenever you get mail, if you get any physical mail, we'll scan it and then we'll we'll shred it and it'll show up in your e-box. And you just have to. I've s- never heard anything about this. You just have to send us something on this. Oh, I mean, it's pretty common knowledge. You should just know about this stuff. No, nope, nobody I know of knows about this stuff either. Oh, you should I ask mean, them. They're probably they'll probably all be like, I'll yeah, we, we've known about this for years. Next Why time I go to the post office, I'll talk to somebody about it. Okay, well, I'm just saying, you know, we're not going to be delivering mail anymore. It's all going to come electronically to your e-box. Nobody has ever, I have never gotten anything in the mail to tell me that. So I'll talk to him at the post office. Well, you know what? Maybe you would get the mail if you had an e-box. Cause those, I do get much, the mail no, every I, day. Well, you didn't get this I'll mail. I'll check it out at, when I go to the post office. We've Thanks sent for calling. several things out over the past couple of years about the e-box, ma'am. That lady is totally against new technology. I think this is a great idea. Everyone should have an e-box hooked up to the outside of their house so they have to stand on their porch to read their mail. That'd be great. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Uh, Fooch. Who's calling, please? This is David from the post office. Yes. And uh, I just needed to let you know that um, you haven't upgraded your mailbox yet, and uh, there's a deadline to upgrade. It's uh, August 31st of this year. What do you mean, upgrade my post? Your mailbox. You know, the mailbox on your house. What do I do to upgrade it? I mean, it's a ginormous... It's all part of one great big unit. <laughs> you said unit. Um, no, like uh, you, uh, you have to upgrade to an e-box. To a what? An e-box. It's an electronic mailbox. It's a new oh, thing. I never heard of anything. I never heard of anything like this. Oh yeah, we're doing this all all across the country. Everyone's going to have an e-box now. And uh, whenever you get physical mail, uh, we'll just scan it in, and it'll show up in your e-box. And you just have to stand there at the mailbox and read it on the screen. That's crazy. This is bogus. Well, no, it's not bogus. This is something we're doing across the country. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, this is no. Forget it. Drop. Go away. Wh- what? Drop what? what were you... <laughs> I think she tried to tell me to drop dead and then decided not to for some reason. Anyway, yeah, I'm suddenly remembering uh, from the last time I did post office pranks in this area that these people do not have mailboxes on their house. They have those big mailboxes that are all grouped together for like every house on the block or whatever, where they have to walk down to the corner and pick up their mail. So is what we're going to do is we're going to move on to a different phone book. It's a phone book that was mailed to me from Servo, and this one is somewhere in Missouri. And hopefully they have normal mailboxes that are attached to houses. Holy crap, the print is really small on this one. Hurts my eyes. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Gallo. This is she. Hey, this is Dave from the post office, and uh, we we noticed yes. we noticed that you haven't upgraded your mailbox yet, and I, I just needed to let you know there's a there's a cutoff date. You have to have it upgraded by August thirty first. What are you talking about upgraded? Well, you have to upgrade to an e box. What's an e box? Uh, it's like a mailbox, um, but it's electronic, and uh, there's a screen on it and a keyboard. And whenever you get mail, instead of bringing it to your house, we're just going to scan it into the computer and send it straight to your e box. Wait. Like, is your mailbox... I don't really get... I'm sorry, what? Hold on. Hold on. Okay, can you repeat that? Um, it's hard to hear you now. What happened? Put you on speaker. Oh, well, now I can't hear you. Can you repeat what you just said about upgrading? Well, don't you know about the upgrading? It's been on the news for the past two years. Do you ever watch the news? No. Oh, well... Should look it up online. You, we got to upgrade to e-boxes by August thirty-first. And what what benefit is that for me? Well, it's a benefit to us because you know um, it's it's a lot of money to go out and deliver the mail to every house. So we're not going to do that anymore. We're just going to do the e-box thing. Do you have a mailbox that's on the outside of your house? Yes. Whoa, your voice changed. That was weird. What happened? No, we have multiple people. I'm sorry. Who is this? That's talking to me. My name is Steve. I'm from the post office. Okay. Can you just send me written documentation on oh, this? Oh, we've done that already several times, and, and you haven't upgraded your mailbox yet. No, I haven't received it. Well, maybe if you had an e-box, you'd receive it. All right. It, I don't have time for this. Um, either you send me something in the mail that I can read through it, Okay. or yes. forget it. Hey, hey, tell that guy in the background to shut the fuck up, because we're trying to have a conversation about your e-box. Damn it, I got hung up on. 
That's a good sign, though, because that's actually the very first number I tried in this phone book, and I got an answer. And she sounded completely weirded out at first. I'm pretty sure I caught them in the middle of doing drugs or something. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Hello. Jennings? Yes, may I ask you, sis? Sure, this is Stephen from the post office. Yes. And um, I just needed to let you know that the... Um, the that you haven't upgraded your mailbox yet, and you have until August 31st to get that upgraded, because we're not going to be delivering mail to normal mailboxes after then. I'm a little confused. Never heard of this before now. Oh, you never heard of the, the new e-boxes? No. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like a mailbox, but it's electronic, and you can't put anything inside of it. It's just a keyboard and a screen, and it mounts on the outside of your house. So, um, yeah, you, ne- you have to upgrade to that by August 31st. You can get those o- over at a, any hardware store or Walmart or anywhere, really. How does... I've never heard of this at all. Really? it's It's been all over the news for the past few years. No, I guess I've been in a shell or something. Yeah, we're not going to... Uh, I'm sorry? So the mailboxes at the end of the road just will not exist anymore? Right, yeah, correct. You have to get one and mount it on the outside of your house next to your front door. Wow. So at least you won't have to stop at that corner mailbox anymore. That'll be nice. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) But uh, what, you just uh, have your own code and you access the mail? Yeah, well, uh, when you send send mail to somebody... You, you you do it like an email address, but it's with their address. So like you'd oh, okay. be like seven thirty nine Warrior Road at Warrington dot whatever I don't know whatever your e box address will be. Gotcha. But we're not going to deliver mail anymore at all. So and this has to be done by April for our uh, August when? August thirty first. August thirty first. Yeah, yeah. If you look at people's doors, you'll notice most people have upgraded already. Wow, I guess I just didn't pay attention. That's weird. Yep, yep. Yeah, any any uh, mail that gets sent to you, we'll just scan it into the computer and it'll show up on your e-box. And you just stand out there and read it. Well, that's one way of uh, saving paper. That's right, yeah. We're saving the earth. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. You're welcome. All right, bye. Goodbye. I don't even know if I'm going to leave that one in. That was so boring. I really want to get someone pissed off at me about this whole e-box thing, and nobody's getting pissed off, except for that one couple that was smoking crack or something when I called them. I could tell I completely interrupted whatever they are doing. Hello. Hi, Mrs. Jennings? Yes. Hey there, it's Roy from the post office. Yes. And I just needed to let you know that you need to upgrade your mailbox before August 31st. What's the matter with it? Well, it's not going to work anymore because we're not delivering mail anymore. It's all going to come to your to your e box. Who am I speaking to? My name is Roy. I'm from the post office. The post office isn't going to deliver mail anymore. No, no, not to that type of mailbox. No, you have to get a new e box. It, it's like a screen with a keyboard on it, and you'll mount it outside your uh, outside your door on the porch. And uh, any mail you get, it'll just come up on the screen. You can s- stand out there and read it. you got to be kidding. No, of course not. You know, most people don't even use mail anymore. I hardly believe what you're saying. Why don't you... Wh- I've not heard this at all. Oh, yeah, it's been on the news. You, haven't, you don't watch the news? Yes, I do. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm surprised you haven't heard about this. Yeah, you have to get a new e-box. The, the mailbox out at the street isn't used anymore? No, we're going to get rid of those. Nope. Yeah, we're, we're, just, we're not going to deliver mail anymore. It's too expensive. We have to maintain all those trucks and pay people Here, to drive let them around. Me, let, would you do me a favor and would you tell my husband this? Oh, yeah, I'd love to. Okay, hold on. Hello? Hey there, is this Jack? Yes, it is. Hey, it's Roy from the post office. Mm-hmm. And I was just telling your wife about um, how you need to upgrade your mailbox before August 31st because your old mailbox isn't going to work anymore. Upgrade it to what? To an e-box. 
Don't tell me you haven't E-box. heard of you, you haven't heard of the E box either. No, I sure haven't. Oh wow. Okay. Well, yeah, it's it's an electronic mailbox, and um, it'll have a screen and a keyboard, and whenever you get uh, mail, we'll just scan it in, and it'll show up on that screen out on your porch. Oh yeah. Yep. And and you're with the you're with the postal service, huh? Yeah, with St. Charles, the post office. Why are you calling us? We're in Warrington. I know. I'm, I'm calling everyone in the area. I'm just we we're supposed to let everyone know who hasn't gotten who hasn't upgraded yet. Yeah, well, so I don't know what to say. That's the first I've heard of that. Oh man, you guys must live under a rock. Yeah, we sure do. Your, your wife had never heard of it either. Yeah, you need to upgrade. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Just go to Walmart or a hardware store or anything and just get one of those new e-boxes. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, you, uh, what is this, some kind of game? You got this much time? What are you talking about? What am I talking about? Why would you call me and tell me I need it? How do you know I don't have an e-box? Well, because we've checked, and, and we know everyone that has How do you check? I checked how? The, the, the post office, the delivery man, he tells us if someone doesn't have an e-box. Oh, he, he <laughs> writes it on a report. Oh, my God. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll rush right over to Walmart and pick up an e-box. Why is that so funny to you? Are, are you just not ready for the 21st century? Yeah, we're ready, pal. Well, it doesn't sound like you are if you don't even have an e-box yet. Most people have had those for yeah. years. Yeah, I'm sure. Everybody's got one. I see them everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I would think so. Yeah, well, I wish I had the time you had to, for this, but unfortunately I don't. What, the time to do my job and call everyone and let them know, the, the people that are too lazy to upgrade, let them know that they need to upgrade? let them know that we need to upgrade you know this is this is the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard of in my life so in other words you're saying you're saying that warrington post office called you and told you that the the uh, mail carrier while he was scanning our box noticed we didn't have an e an email system out no, there no, on no, our e-box, mailbox, box, right? not email it's totally different it's not email yeah just uh, just an e-box okay all we're doing is scanning your mail and putting it up on your screen. That's going to be outside on your porch. Oh, okay, all right, cool. Well, as soon as my mail doesn't deli- as soon as my mail doesn't show up every day in the mailbox, then I'll uh, okay. Then I'll rush out and that's buy That's the way one. you want to do it. We'll probably start uh, fining you for not upgrading because it's mandatory. Yeah, we're well, good for you. It's mandatory. You're find me, motherfucker. Huh? You're, you know, you're an idiot. You really are. How am I an idiot? You are a god. I'm, I'm just, you're an idiot. I'm telling you the law. Oh, fuck you. What? Why would you say that to me? I'm just doing my job. Well, that was harsh and uncalled for. And damn it, this area has those uh, grouped mailboxes also. But it doesn't seem to matter anyway. I can just tell them they don't have to go there anymore. Or I could just stop doing these. But I think I'm going to do just one more. I want to get one more response before I quit on these. Wishes he had as much time as I did. What's he doing? He's just sitting there at home. He's probably watching TV. You know why I have so much spare time? Because I don't sit there and watch TV all day. I play on the internet all day. Oh, here's one that's going to pick up, because his name is Floyd. If your name's Floyd, that means you're retired and you stay home. Sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected. Oh, or, or you're dead, I guess. Rest in peace, Floyd. Hello. Hi, Mrs. Jennings? Yes. Hey there, it's Roy from the post office. Yeah. And uh, I just needed to let you know that um, we've noticed you haven't upgraded your mailbox yet, and you need to upgrade that by the end of the summer, by August 31st. I didn't know that would mean upgrade. Oh, you have to upgrade to an e-box. So What's you, an e-box? Well, you'll get all your mail electronically, and it'll be on Oh, a, I don't think so. This is a scam. No, it's not a scam. <laughs> Everyone's doing this. A scam. Come on. Well, I guess that does kind of sound like a scam. Probably thinks I'm going to try and get her credit card number. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Jennings? I guess. Hey there, it's Roy from the post office in St. Charles. Mm -hmm. I I just needed to let you know that uh, we noticed you haven't upgraded your mailbox yet, and uh, you have until August 31st to get that upgraded. Okay, so what do we have to do to get that upgraded? Um, You just go to Walmart or uh, Home Depot or anywhere like that and uh, just buy one of the new e-boxes. 
Oh, the new e-boxes. Okay. Yep. Yep. They're about three hundred dollars. Okay. And uh, and um, we have to have that done by August what? August thirty first. August thirty first. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, okay. Uh, uh, all of your mail, instead of getting your mail delivered, we're just going to scan it, and we're going to it'll show up on your e box, and then we'll throw it away. What? But that's how it's going to work. We're not going to deliver the mail anymore. We're just going to send it to your e box. You just you mount it on the outside of your house where your mailbox is right now. Mm-hmm. Or or if you do the mailbox on the outside of your house, and mm-hmm. um and then you know it'll just show up there. Okay, so, okay, so, okay, all right, and okay, I'll I'll talk to my husband about it. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay, so you're supposed to uh, hold on for a quick second. Okay. Hello. Hey there, is this Mr. Jennings? Yeah. Uh, this is Roy from the post office here in St. Charles. Uh-huh. I, uh, I just needed a, I was just telling your wife, you need to upgrade your mailbox to one of those new e-boxes by August 31st. Really? Yep. Well, did they send a letter out on this? Oh, yeah, yeah, we sent several letters out just to let everyone know about the change. Um, well, you know, a, really? lot of, a lot of people have upgraded already. I don't know if you've noticed driving around, but you'll see e-boxes on the outside of people's houses. No. What do they look like? Oh, uh, they look just like a mailbox, but they've got a keyboard and a screen on them. And, uh, really? Instead of delivering the mail, you'll just get all of your mail on your e-box. And you just, you just stand out there on the porch and, and read it and... Um, you know, then we'll we'll shred it and we'll throw it away. Your, the originals. Really? I mean, we'll recycle them, of course, but we'll, we, you won't get the originals anymore. We're just going to send it to your e box. And this is a regular mailbox. Well, it looks like a mailbox. Um, it's just a it's but it's an e box. No idea what you're talking about. Well, you know, it's got I'll a screen. It it's got a screen and a keyboard on it. On your out on the street, you're going to have a screen and a keyboard. Well, no, you're going to you're going to mount it on the outside of your house, and then when you want to check your mail, you just walk out there and and pull up your your e box mail. Yeah, I don't know. So I have to get one. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. They're about three hundred dollars. You can get them at Walmart or Home Depot or anywhere or really. Not get mail. Yep, yep. So you can get your mail. I mean, come on, who really gets mail anymore? It's all about email. Yeah, but this, I don't know. But this is an email. This is not email. This is this is e-box mail, which seems messed up. All right, I'll look into it. Well, you know, you don't have to get one, and you don't have to get an attitude with me, motherfucker. I'm just letting you know that if you don't have it by right. August 31st, <laughs> now I know this is bullshit. What? Hey, don't curse at me. <laughs> I don't understand what tipped him off. How did he know it was bullshit? I think I've done enough of these at this point. Maybe I should try them again when it's later in the day because I'm not getting a lot of answers for this whole thing going through the phone book, even though it's five o'clock out there and everyone should be home by now. You know what? They should make e-boxes or or at least give us an option to have our mail scanned and just sent to our email address and it can just all be filtered straight into the spam folder because I'm sure that's what it would all be. Actually, never mind. That's a stupid idea. (laughs) Everyone has like online bill pay and everything already. E-boxes are the stupidest idea ever. Do you guys remember back when the internet was a brand new thing back in the late 90s and everyone was super excited about email and they were talking about the death of the post office because we're all going to use email in the future. Who's going to need to have things sent to the post office? And there were always these renderings of those big blue mailboxes that you see outside with the curved top on it. But instead of a slot for mail, there would be a keyboard like a big IBM clickety clackety keyboard. (laughs) and a giant screen hooked up to it. And that's how the U.S. mail is going to be in the future. We're all going to have e-boxes. We're going to walk up to a blue post box out on the sidewalk and type in our mails to each other. Whatever happened to that idea? Why aren't we doing that? God damn it. First they don't give us flying cars, and now this. No e-boxes. I can just see the post office... I can just see the post office doing something like this, though, if they were to try and modernize their their whole thing, their whole system. Instead of making it where you get your mail on your laptop or whatever, they would set up some sort of a system where there's a big electronic thing mounted on the outside of your house and computer terminals out in the street that look like blue mailboxes. I think that's exactly what the post office is going to do someday when they modernize things. And I think it's going to work. They're going to take the world by storm. We're not going to use email anymore. We're going to use our e-boxes. Let's listen to some voicemails and then quit. Hi, Roy. It's Lily. 
Haley. Every time I spoke, you know, every time I left you a message, you called yourself a narcissist. I really want to know why you said that. Did I? It may be because I am an old woman that's listened to prank calls for a long time, but I have no clue as to why you said you're a narcissist. Now, your voice does sound slightly narcissistic, <laughs> but I really don't want to believe that you are. Thanks. You're really, really wonderful prank caller and i do enjoy listening oh, to your shucks. shows every other day or whenever you decide to do one i will be listening to phonelosers.org hoping that you make another um prank call show and that i will be on there speaking to you and please do not be a narcissist for i was involved with a narcissist and i really don't need any more narcissists in my life bye roy Okay, no promises. I don't know why I said that. I don't remember what I was even talking about. And I don't remember saying I was a narcissist. I, I have a really horrible memory. And I would say I'm not a narcissist, but come on, look at this show. It's all about me making prank calls and then playing voicemails of people telling me how awesome I am. How can I not be? Hey, POA. It's Time Guy. Um, I love you, and I love Broccoli. Bye! I noticed that he said he loves me first before Broccoli, and the reason I noticed that is because I'm a narcissist. Hello, Roy. It's Matt from Colorado. Hello. Uh, just a few questions for you. Um, when are you going to start doing True Green calls again? Because I love the True Green calls. Those are some hilarious calls that you that you do. And I love the, uh, the customer service calls that you've done for, for Albertsons and Safeway. Those were flipping hilarious. Yeah, I love those. Those were so much fun. I hope the guy sends me more of those because those were a lot of fun. Wish I could do more of those, but I'm just out of them. I really hope those come back. And True Green, yes, I agree. I need to do more True Green calls. Soon, very soon. Maybe on the next show I'll do True Green calls. Yeah, keep up the great work. And when are you going to... Uh, you mentioned that you're only going to do carding calls like twice a year. So when is the next carding... Uh, call spree is going to happen again. Uh, could you let us know? In Ding love Timber. The green calls of course. And the carding calls and the customer service calls. Keep those up, man. I love those. Those are flipping hilarious. Keep up the great work, Thanks. Roy. Love what you're doing. Bye. I do think I remember saying I was going to do carding calls twice a year, but then after doing a full month of them, I suddenly decided that, holy crap, I don't want to do these twice a year. So I'm only doing them in Ding Timber, which happens from September 1st to September 31st or 30th or whatever. You know, all of September. So that's when you're going to hear some more Ding Timber calls in September. Hello, my name is Ahmed Omadi. I call, I am from the Joe, Joe Rogan. Uh, I... I want you to come Holy on. Shit. Come on, come on, let's go. California. Holy uh, shit, you woman. guys. Um, uh, it's the producer from the Joe Rogan podcast. This is amazing. It worked. Come on out. Everybody come. Uh, you do the phones, right? You, you come on. All right. Come, come. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan podcast. Great. You come. Thank this you. This is awesome. All right. Goodbye. I'm going to buy my airline tickets as soon as I finish up this show. Hey, Brad. Uh... Long time caller, first time listener here. Um, wow. You know, your show is actually a lot better than I, I expected. I've been talking shit about it for a while now, I'm just on the phone. But mm -hmm. now that I gave it a chance, it's it's not that bad. So keep it up, man. Uh, Thank okay, you. Okay, I hope to see you in, 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 in the next life. And uh, Jesus loves you. Goodbye. What? No, he doesn't. Jesus hates me. I'm the exception for the love of Jesus. Hey, Brad. It's Crimson again. Hey um, there. I was just listening to some old prank calls. I, yeah. think, I think Crimson is the new Corbin guy, because I haven't heard Corbin guy. I haven't seen any voicemails from him lately, but there's plenty from Crimson. I have, to, I have to say, one of my favorites is the Sensei Doug ones, where you call businesses right next to a karate studio and say that you're Sensei Doug from right next door, and that they just keep giving you the snake eyes, and just stop looking at me. Stop looking at me. So do it again. Come on, Brad. Okay. Good. And it's super easy to find tons of places right next to Karate Studios. So. I do need to do that. You don't even have an excuse, Brad. All right, I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do my best. Maybe I'll just start looking up random karate places and then calling up the businesses next to them. Oh, look, here's a bunch of voicemails from Corbin Guy. I'm going to choose the one that's 37 seconds. Oh, dear Brad, it's Corbin Guy again. Sorry, uh, I may have uh, forgotten to uh, um, leave some important details in my previous message. Um, yeah, nice try. Lake I'm, I'm not going to play your previous Fiesta, message. Winters, California, Monticello Dam. 
Probably just saying random words that have nothing to do with your previous voicemail that was over two minutes long. There we go. Okay, now you have it. Thanks. All right, look. Uh, or, or just or just type in uh, Link Barry as a glory hole. <laughs> yeah, that, that should do it. It's not right. going to work. Have fun. Bye. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to listen to your previous voicemail. You can't trick me. Hello, RBCP. It's Willie Bro Guy from the GTA crew. Oh. You know, I've been meaning to call in because I have something I want to say. Um, first off, I didn't appreciate, you, you know, making fun of my phone call. He's saying it's Garbo, and it probably is during this voicemail, but mm-hmm. whatever. Sounds good this time. Um, and secondly, I need ideas for the GTA crew emblem. I don't know if anyone plays this the game anymore, but... I like the emblem that you have on there right now. It's like the PLA symbol with a circle around it. I like it. You should just keep it like that. So, if anyone wants to send me any, or, you know, mobile shit stuff that'll get into my computer, yep. you can email me at kinghughes, H-U-G-H-E-S, 88, at Gmail. All right. Well, you know, your show's been pretty good lately, RBCP, you know. Except for this one. I'm done. It, it, no one contacts me. I'm not listening anymore, okay? Bye. Bye. So that's the guy that set up the GTA crew for the Phone Losers, which you can find by going to phonelosers.org and just looking over there in the right sidebar. There's a link to the GTA crew, and even though there's a ton of members in it, I never see anyone from PLA on the crew anymore. I mean, I do occasionally. I mean, occasionally I'll see somebody in there, but it's pretty rare. You know, used to, I'd get on there and there'd be like four people from PLA, but not anymore. They've all moved on to cooler crews or better video games or something. For some reason, I still love GTA. I don't play it as much as I used to, but but that's pretty much the only thing I play anymore these days. If we're going to be taking over a convention this year and making it PLA Con, shouldn't you be making a 2016 PLA Con swag pack that oh, you need to yeah. charge people for, and that can technically be like the ticket? I should I don't do know that. You know what you think? And that's if I ever get around to going to a convention this year, which I should probably make plans for and buy a ticket if I'm going to do that soon. I should just make it some lame convention up in Portland, so I don't have to pay for anything. I can just drive up there. Maybe the zine convention. There's a zine convention I went to last year. It was horrible. I'll make you guys go to that. Hey, uh, my name is High School Graduate on YouTube, and I suppose Google Plus as well. Anyway, uh, I like your shows, and I've been to two Katy Perry concerts. You can call me a Katy Cat. Wow. Katy Cat? What? No, that name's taken. Can't steal Katy Cat's name. What do you think you're doing? Hey, Roy, C64 Man here. Uh, I'm calling you through my antique 1939 uh, switchboard. I got it connected to Google Voice. And, wow. I uh, love the show. Uh, I'm always sitting in the PCN chat room watching. I don't know if it's because you're calling through a switchboard, but for some reason, this voicemail is not transcribed for me through Google Voice. It just says transcript not available, which is weird. I mean, your voice sounds fine. Why isn't it translating? And what are you talking about, PC and chat room? PC and doesn't exist anymore. What chat room Talk are you in? there in the phone loser chat room, so uh, just wanted to say hi, and uh, hopefully Ew. it sounds halfway decent coming through this old switchboard. It sounds good to me, but I don't think it sounds good to Google for some reason. Have a good day. Bye. Catch us. And then for some reason, there's like two and a half minutes of silence on, on the end of this voicemail. So I think Google Voice has a serious problem with your 1939 switchboard, but I don't, and that's all that matters. Hey, Brad. Just thought I'd uh, give you guys a call. Well, I am currently in Canada. This call is from coming from Canada. Holy shit. I believe they have a service up here. I can't believe I, it. I thought they had to just like uh, get the Mounties up on the moose or something and transfer notes to each other. But yeah. Bye. Wow. Bye. Phones in Canada. You learn so much from listening to this show. I had no idea. Hey, Brad. It's George, the FedEx guy again. Hey, George. Hey, this was in your latest show, and some guy from Maine said to do some more calls to I Maine. know. He needs to shut the fuck up. Who does he think he is Tell me where to call? And I just wanted to say that I'm also from Maine, so that would be really awesome if you did some Maine calls, <sighs> and I'll try to get some Keep submissions in. Okay, thanks. Bye. All right, bye. All right, one last voicemail. This better hey, be a good Brad. one. Hey, Brad. It's Brad. Hey, Brad. I was just listening to your show where you were calling customer complainers at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. And it's got to be said, that's probably your greatest show so far of 2016. Aw, thanks. Uh, when, you told that la- when the lady told you that she wasn't going to come in your store anymore, and you told her she should because you sold tampons, <laughs> that was pretty fucking funny. Yeah, uh, I, was yeah. I can't take credit for that, though. That was the chat room. Chat room told, chat room told me to say that one. That's off. And also, I'm glad you took my idea of uh, playing a shitload of voicemails at the end of the show. 
uh, I would like a producer credit for that episode, please. Okay. And uh, also, I think I should probably get a producer credit for the last episode, or at least an associate producer. Uh, even though it wasn't my idea, uh, when I called you with the poem, uh, Roses are Red, Violets are Blue, and then uh, I said the numbers, 4, 8, 15, uh, 16, 23, 42, uh, the very next show was a lost show. So uh, hmm. kind of a big coincidence there. So I'd like to at least associate the producer credit. I can't that say for sure, but that, that probably was your fault. Okay, uh, bye. So since Brad is telling me to uh, end the show, basically, I was going to do a bunch more pranks, but Brad, the producer of today's show, is telling me to end the show. So thank you, Brad, the producer, for uh, giving me lost ideas. I assume even if I don't realize it, maybe it was just a subconscious thing from that voicemail of yours, but I fully blame you for the entire lost thing and whatever that other thing you told me was. In addition to Brad being the producer, today our audio engineers are Buster C, Darnell, and Jason B. They are responsible for the superior audio that you heard on today's show. I don't know about you guys, but personally my favorite part was when I opened the windows and turned on the fan that was really loud. But you guys probably didn't even hear it because we have amazing audio engineers. They're professionals. Special thanks this week to Brian W., Default Cecil, and of course, Nicholas Caesar. Even though he's not a regular sponsor of the show, he has been going crazy on on the PLA Facebook group lately, drawing shitloads of pictures related to phone loser prank calls and other snowplow show related items. I'm kind of an asshole for not using his art as show art yet for each individual episode, but I'll get around to that one of these years. Thank you, Nicholas Caesar, for all of the amazing art you've been doing, both for my show and for Laugh Track Matt's show, and I think he did some stuff for Dwight. If PCN were still a thing, I think we'd probably be calling him the official PCN artist. You can look at Nicholas's art at scaryart.com. That's scary art with a hyphen in the middle because it's always a good idea to put hyphens in URLs so that instead of saying scaryart.com, you can just say scary hyphen art. That's much less confusing. Catering for this episode was provided by Catbox, and my after-lunch sensual massage was provided by Metal. Thank you, Metal and Catbox, for doing those things. And, of course, today's show sponsors were Chris and Sarah. Thanks, Chris and Sarah, for supporting the show for a really long time now. It is much appreciated. If anyone else out there would like to support the show, the most important thing you can do is promote the show as much as you possibly can. Post it on your Facebooks and your Twitters and your Reddits and your Yik Yaks and hack your local radio station and get their systems to play the Snowplow Show instead of Top 40 music and stuff. Thank you, everybody, for listening and for supporting the show. And I'm going to end the show by saying, OK, Google, email all of my contacts to prank submission form at phonelosers.com. Yes, confirm. Do it. Confirm. Yes. Don't listen to that other guy. It's fine. Yes, Google. That's correct. Yes. Do it. Come on. Just do it. Stop confirming and do it. No, I don't go to the go cup places and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go cups out the window because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? I'm a diabetic and I drink water. I don't have a cup. Bottled water is what I do. Well, you can't throw the bottles out the window. I don't throw the bottle, no. I don't go to the go-cup places, and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go-cups out the window, because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? You know who lives next to me? Andy Anderson. Oh, shit. He just retired as the deputy chief of police for the city of Phoenix. I'm going to give him this phone number and ask. I think you have ADD. No, I don't drink coffee, I don't even have a cup I drink bottled water so you need to back your facts up I'm a diabetic, need to watch my sugar count Coffee's not a beverage I drink when I'm driving about I've never drop litter in my whole damn life If you see me sat in Starbucks, I'm just here to use the Wi-Fi I didn't see no secret camera hidden in the cacti Andy Anderson is gonna fuck you up, wise guy I don't drink coffee, it's not my drink of choice I order spring water when I'm drinking with the boys Caffeine is mean to me, there's nothing to enjoy Will you say your name again? Roy? I'm recording this call on my answering machine I assure you that it's working though you didn't hear a beep I'm gonna take this tape and fucking march it down the street Knock on Andy's door and get a hair by the chief of Phoenix, please No, I don't go to the go cup places And I don't go out to the car And I don't throw the go cup out the window Because I don't have any You don't have any windows? I'm a diabetic and I drink water I don't have a cup Bottled water is what I do. Well, you can't throw the bottles out the window. I don't throw the bottle, no. I don't go to the go-cup places, and I don't go out for coffee.
and I don't throw the go cups out the window because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? No, I don't go to the go cup places, and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go cups out the window because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? I'm a diabetic, and I drink water. I don't have a cup. Bottled water is what I do. Well, you can't throw the bottles out the window. I don't throw the bottles, no. I don't go to the go-cup places, and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go-cups out the window because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? Do you know who lives next to me? Andy Anderson. Oh, shit. He just retired as the deputy chief of police for the city of Phoenix. I'm going to give him this phone number and ask. I think you have ADD. I bet, you're, I bet you're the most annoying neighbor ever, like every little thing that happens to you. I'm going to get the deputy. He lives next door to me. We're good friends. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, I don't go to the places I and I drink water. Yeah. We've got our cacti is on you. That's our new slogan. Just hey. get off this fucking bong. Leave me alone.